stronger than Frankenstein, faster than the Wolfman, sexier than Dracula. Well, maybe not sexier than Dracula, but we're talking neo-monsters at the horror movie syllabus. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Horror Movie Syllabus. My name is Professor Victor, and as usual, I'll be your host as we go through all of the essential, noteworthy, interesting, and downright notorious modern horror films. If you're new to the channel, I recommend that you check out our introduction video, link to that in the description below. It kind of explains what the Horror Movie Syllabus is all about. In short though, what we do is we take a particular subgenre of horror and pick three representative uh, movies for that subgenre to examine. Today's subgenre is Neo Monsters, and if you're not familiar with Neo Monsters or don't really know what they are, don't worry, you're not alone. Essentially, Neo Monsters are just modern versions of monsters. So, uh, we've talked in the past about classic monsters, Frankenstein, Dracula, the Wolfman, the Mummy, and we've talked about the slasher icons, which I would argue are the, uh, the modern versions of Frankenstein and Dracula, etc., uh, and that's Jason and Freddy and Michael Myers and, and those slasher uh, icons. Uh, we've talked about those. The Neo monsters are the monsters that are modern, like Jason and Freddy, but they're not the slashers. They are actual monsters, actual beasts, uh, actual creatures. And so that's what we're looking at today are modern creature films that are a little bit more stylized or a little bit more violent or a little bit more better with special effects than what we got back in the classic monster days. I'm hoping that as we go through the movies, it'll become a little bit more apparent what exactly classifies as a neo-monster. I think once you see the movies that we're talking about, it'll be pretty clear what a neo-monster is and, and why we've given it its own subgenre. As usual, we're separating these movies into three categories, undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate level. And these levels are going to indicate the, uh, the order of how much I like these movies. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into these films. Our undergraduate selection today, our first movie to talk about is Chud. Chud came out in 1984, and it's a uh, total B-movie, schlocky, campy, creature feature movie. It uh, It's kind of apparent from the name alone. The, the name Chud actually stands for Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. That'll be uh, something that you can win a bar bet with at some point in time, I imagine. The movie's basically about a a group of creatures that live underground in the New York sewers and they, uh, they're they rising up to uh, attack people. And uh, there's a whole uh, investigation into the murders uh, and uh, uh, kind of a, a, a government cover-up of the murders. Uh, and that's maybe a little bit of my issue with the movie is that it... Um, it spends a little bit more time on these uh, people trying to cover up or or investigate uh, the, the chuds rather than getting us to the chuds doing what the chuds do, which is is kill people. Uh, and that's what we're here for in a creature feature. We're here to see the creatures do their thing. And that does happen in chud. Don't get me wrong. It just it happens in the third act. It takes a while to get to it. And it's a little bit slow going in the, in the, in the time period before that. Mind you, I'm not saying that the movie is boring or anything like that. I enjoy the movie just fine, uh, and it has gotten a cult following, and it's easy to see why it has a cult following. The movie's playing it straight. It's not trying to be silly, but it is silly. And I always think that that's kind of the sweet spot for a camp film, that it's not trying to be funny. It's not tongue-in-cheek so much as it's... Uh, uh, it's being earnest and just falling short. And I think that's where Chud comes in. That said, the Chuds themselves are pretty creepy. They're, by today's standards, not the most uh, impressive special effects. They're costumes and, uh, and they're not all that scary, but they are, they are fun. Uh, they remind me a little bit of like the the creatures on Land of the Lost. If you ever watched that show uh, from the seventies or early eighties, um, they're 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 a cool design. The movie probably is ripe for a remake. Actually, it's not a bad concept. And if they had uh, uh, some really cool effects that they could use now, not so much CGI necessarily, but just uh, updated effects to make the chuds look a lot creepier, this could probably work in a remake pretty well. And Frankly, the name Chud has the name recognition that you want for a remake. I'm kind of shocked they haven't done a remake already. Uh, Chud has become kind of a pop culture reference in and of itself. Not just the movie, but the name, the C-H-U-D. Uh, I think there's actually a, a movie website that's uh, named Chud also. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head what it's referred to, but uh, uh, I know that Chud's kind of like this running joke to... Um, 
people talk about chuds like the way I'm talking about them as if chuds are a, a type of creature in and of themselves, like the word chud, as opposed to it being an anagram. But uh, I think that chud is enough of a name recognition that you could remake this pretty successfully. They did do a sequel uh, back in the day, and the sequel is... I, I, I can't even really remember it. It's, it's that forgettable. But the thing that's memorable about it is the name. Uh, uh, Chud 2, Bud the Chud. Uh, it's, it's a great title. It's it, leaning a little bit more into the camp factor of it. Uh, but the, the original is worth a watch, if for no other reason than to just kind of know the noteworthiness of the chud movie like what people are talking about when they reference chud i imagine a lot of people talk about chud and haven't even actually seen it don't go in expecting great art don't go in expecting something amazing don't go in expecting to be terrified or anything like that go in expecting a fun creature feature that's going to be a little bit heavier on the human investigation and a little lighter on the on the chud gore than we would like but uh you'll get to that chud gore at the end and is it worth the payoff Maybe kind of up to you, but uh, it's definitely worth seeing just because it's so noteworthy. It's it's kind of a uh, a cult classic, um, and I think like you know for your horror education, it's kind of a good one to have to check off the box. So that's why I made the list. That's why I'm recommending it here. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Let us know what you think. Our second movie today, our graduate level movie, is Pumpkinhead. Now, Pumpkinhead is another creature feature that came out in the 80s, 1988 to be specific. Uh, and this one is one that I really like. Uh, this movie was directed by Stan Winston, who is a very famous special effects master. Uh, and we'll probably wind up talking about him uh, in other places in the horror movie syllabus. And Winston's involvement is part of what makes this movie so good. Uh, specifically, the creature looks fantastic. If you haven't seen it before, the movie Pumpkinhead stars Lance Henriksen uh, of Aliens fame and many, many other movies, and we will talk about him so many times in the horror movie syllabus. Uh, as a, uh, a bereaved father who has lost his son in a horrible accident, and he wants to seek revenge on the boys that are responsible for that accident, so he raises up this creature called Pumpkinhead uh, to exact revenge. Uh, I love it. I love the creature. Pumpkin head looks really cool and creepy. And those effects actually hold up now. They're practical effects. So they hold up really well uh, for the most part, uh, even though the movie is, you know, 30 years old. And the story is a fairly simplistic one, but it works. Lance Henriksen giving his all. Uh, he's an underrated actor who... Uh, uh, basically because he does so much B-movie and straight-to-video schlock, kind of uh, gets forgotten for being as talented as he actually is. And this is earlier in his career where he's not really phoning it in. He's actually giving quite a performance. So it makes the movie better than it should be. This is a B-movie. It is a, a a schlocky creature feature movie, but it's it's uh, it's not so much that it's ambitious, but it just it, it, the quality is a, a notch above what the B movie would be. This is a better movie than Chud. Uh, it's it's something that uh, it really works surprisingly so. It's better than you would think it would be, uh, and as a result. Uh, I think that's why people have gravitated towards it so much, why it's endured as long as it has as something of a cult classic, because it is a good movie. It's like a genuinely not ironic, not a uh, notorious, funny, uh, campy movie. Uh, it's a genuinely good movie that I really enjoy quite a bit. Now, it did spawn off a, a, a slew of sequels that are mostly, if not all, direct-to-video, and the quality of those are what you would expect them to be. They are... Fine. I, I mean, they're 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 not great. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, they're, they're are they a bad time? No, not necessarily. But you could skip them. You could watch them. It makes no difference. But the first one is definitely worth your time. It's something you should check out. Something you should see. If you like monster movies, if you like uh, revenge stories, I think that Pumpkinhead delivers. I think you won't be disappointed. So check it out. Let us know what you think of it in the comments below. Uh, I, I'm hoping you like it as much as I like it because uh, Pumpkinhead's kind of a favorite of mine. And the last movie we'll be talking about today, our postgraduate level movie, is A Quiet Place. Now, unlike the first two entries in this video, A Quiet Place is a much more modern film. It came out in 2018, which as of this recording is just two years ago. And it's a phenomenal movie. Uh, it was directed by John Krasinski, uh, best known as Jim from The Office, uh, or, or Jack Ryan from the Jack Ryan series on Amazon. And uh, 
he and his wife, his real life wife, Emily Blunt, who plays his wife in the movie, uh, are living in a post apocalyptic world that's been destroyed by these monsters that uh, are attracted to sound. So uh, all the survivors, the straggling survivors in this post apocalyptic world, have to keep silent in order to not attract the monsters. So they live in complete silence. And that's the hook of the movie, and it works extremely well. Sound design plays a really key part in this movie. Uh, there's long bouts of silence in the movie. Every little sound like puts you on edge because you know that that might be the sound that triggers the monster. And the cream on top of this movie, the, the, the key thing to, to really kind of draw you into this is uh, the casting of Millicent Simmons as John Krasinski's daughter in the movie. Uh, she's a real deaf actress who plays a deaf woman or deaf girl in the movie. And it's an interesting thing to have in there because she has this unique perspective on this world she's always living in silence and everybody else living in silence just kind of uh, comes to her level in that sense but she also isn't aware when noises are being made uh, so it adds this extra layer of intrigue and tension to the movie that works extremely well the entire cast of the movie is actually quite good krasinski and blunt have genuine chemistry and that is a big part of why the movie works it's about one family it's not trying to be too big or grandiose you connect with this one family you believe in their relations with one another and you you really buy into the family dynamic and the family drama and that's the heart of this movie it's why it works really well it's why it's not a creature feature schlock film a b movie it really is a little bit more elevated than that maybe not so much to call it elevated horror but it's an it's elevated from your normal creature schlock. Uh, the, the creatures themselves are pretty cool looking. They're not amazing, but they're good. Uh, they owe a little bit to, uh, like every creature feature, they owe a little bit to the Alien uh, franchise in terms of design. But they are good. And the sound gimmick is well, better than a gimmick, actually. It's really a clever hook that adds a lot of... Uh, cool and tense scenes a lot of interesting uh moments in the movie that uh really get the uh the hairs on the back of your neck up as you can tell i'm pretty enthusiastic about this movie i enjoyed this quite a bit i had high hopes when i saw the trailer and uh it met those expectations so i'm a big fan of this uh i don't want to give too many of the plot points away uh but there's a lot of really great moments in this movie some of which you may have actually seen in the trailer before but i don't want to i don't want to spoil it here if you haven't uh definitely check it out if you haven't seen it i know that they are talking about doing a sequel in fact uh, i believe the sequel should have already come out as of this recording which is at the end of 2020 and uh, it got delayed because of the COVID uh, pandemic. And so it probably comes out probably pretty soon uh, in 2021. I'm not so sure how I feel about that. I, I don't feel like this is a movie that needs a sequel. I feel like they said what they needed to say in the first movie. I felt like the ending is quite good in this movie. I don't think it needs to go on any further. That said, I'm open to it just because I think Krasinski did a great job with the first one. Uh, and so he's coming back to write and direct the second one. So I'm I'm a little bit more uh, confident uh, knowing that the original creator is back in. Plus, they did have a trailer for it that dropped earlier that was actually really, really good. So that kind of got me a little bit more warmed up to the idea because I was really out on the idea of a, you know, a quieter place or whatever they're going to call it, quieter place too. Um, I, I felt like it was unnecessary, maybe a cash grab, but I'm kind of hoping that maybe it's not. Maybe it's better than I think it's going to be. Uh, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, but the first one is definitely excellent. Uh, high recommend from me. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. It's got a lot of great tension to it. It's got some really good scares to it. Uh, it's definitely worth your time. Definitely one to check out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, and if you have seen it, let us know what you think as always. Uh, we'd love to hear what you say in the comments. So that'll about do it for our video exploring the Neo Monsters subgenre. But as usual, we'd like to give you a few extra credit films in case you like this subgenre and want to explore a little deeper. The first one we're going to talk about is The Blob, and we're talking about the 80s remake of the 1958 classic. Uh, the, the, the 1958 classic is excellent in its own right. It's just out of scope for the, the horror movie syllabus, which does modern horror films, 1970 to the present. Uh, but the 1980s remake is good. It's It's got a better special effects than the, uh, the original. It's a little bit more gory, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, so it really kind of captures the... Uh, 
the slow moving glacial pace of the monster of the blob uh but adding a little bit more of that 80s sensibility of just kind of grotesque uh, kills almost like a slasher film but it's uh, uh you know it's it's a good creature feature movie uh it's a little underrated but i think uh, in modern days it's really kind of come into its own gotten a little bit better reputation again uh people are going to hold it up to the original and the original is a classic in its own right so kind of an unfair comparison but on its own fun movie check it out the second extra credit movie i'm going to mention is called feast and feast was the product of a, a tv show a program that was called uh, project Greenlight, where they had uh different directors competing to try to make a short film uh get a film project off the ground i think it was um Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, who were producing that show. And the makers of Feast were one of the winners of that show. And Feast is one of the byproducts of it. And it's a fun movie. I really enjoyed Feast. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. It's, it's, it's oh God, like 20 years old now. Uh, and I don't know that it uh, holds up uh, as well with modern audiences because a lot of the, um, the fun gimmicks and the stylization of the movie might feel a little dated by today's standards. I'm not quite sure. It's been a little while since I've revisited it. Uh, but I remember finding it very clever at the time. Uh, a lot of fun uh, kind of playing up uh, the stereotype tropes of the characters, uh, you know, kind of identifying them, but uh, text on the screen, video game style, which again, I think you've seen that probably a lot now, but it felt fresh at the time. But it's a fun, gory movie. It really doesn't shy away from the gore and the violence in a fun way. It's not trying to uh, upset you or disturb you so much as it's just trying to kind of gross you out and have a blast of a time. And on that, I think it succeeds pretty well. It's got two sequels that are also pretty good. It all ties together as one little trilogy fairly well. But uh, the first one alone, you can just watch that one. And if you don't dig it, then you probably wouldn't even want to bother with the other two. But if you like it, then I would say, yeah, watch the other two also because it's more of the same. It's a fun, good time. It's a fast-paced movie. Lots of action, lots of gore, uh, cool effects. So if you like that kind of stuff, Feast might be a good ride for you. And the last movie we're going to talk about is Underwater. Underwater came out earlier this year, 2020, uh, right before the pandemic started. And uh, it stars Kristen Stewart and Vincent Cassell. Uh, and they are uh, underwater uh, divers. I can't remember if they're miners or, or uh, scientists. It doesn't really matter because almost instantly uh their underwater facility gets attacked by monsters and it starts with the action literally in the first 30 seconds of the movie which is one of the best things about it it just goes uh immediately and it doesn't really stop the entire time that's one of the best parts of the movie uh, the tension in the movie the uh the claustrophobia and the uh the foreboding sense of dread that uh, the actors uh, or the characters feel in the movie as they're trying to figure out how to survive their their installation getting destroyed and flooded and, and to survive these monsters out there in the water uh, is is awesome. It really works really well. Uh, the one the nitpick I would have in this movie is that it's, it's a lower budget film. And that's unfortunate because they could have used a little bit more budget to show a little bit more. Now, we all know the story of how Jaws, uh, the shark didn't get shown that much because the, the, the robotic shark wasn't working very well. And as a result, the not seeing the shark kind of added to some of the suspense and the dread. You could say the same thing is true here. You don't see the monsters as much. And as a result, it kind of adds to that mystique and that, that scare factor in the movie. The problem is that sometimes the movie's really, really dark. And again, that might add to some of the creepiness of it. They do the best they can with it. But I do feel like had they had more budget, they could have lit things a little bit more, especially the underwater scenes where they're out swimming in the water. So you could have just seen things a little bit more. Uh, think like The Abyss uh, or movies like that where you can have a better idea of what it looks like down there and still have the creep factor. Uh, underwater doesn't have the budget for that. So... Uh, I think that's probably why some of the scenes are maybe a little darker than they should have been. And as a result, sometimes it's a little hard to tell what's going on. But that's a minor nitpick. The movie overall works really, really well. The actors are excellent in there. Uh, Kristen Stewart, uh, whatever your opinion of Kristen Stewart is, doesn't matter. She's good in this movie and uh, holds this movie together. And the movie avoids some of the lamer tropes that you would normally expect to see in a movie like this. I'll be honest with you, this movie is essentially something of an alien knockoff, um, as so many movies are, but it does it well. It, it doesn't have a lot to work with, but it, what it does have, the resources it does have, work really, really well. And the monsters, the neo-monsters in this movie, look great. So um, 
I would definitely recommend this one if you haven't checked it out. It was it kind of went under the radar. It didn't really do much in the box office, but it really seemingly uh, found an audience uh, or uh, uh, kind of a, a, a cult uh, <laughs> going around it uh, in, in home video and, and, and streaming. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, check it out. It's definitely worth your time. I recommend it. I stand by it. So those are our extra credit suggestions for the neo-monster subgenre. You might be thinking that we missed some movies that should have been added to uh, this list, and uh, if so, I'd like to hear what you think those are. So if you have any suggestions of movies that should have been included in this neo-monster subgenre, leave them in the comments below so we can check them out. Uh, hopefully uh, uh, you come up with some ideas or suggestions that none of us have seen or that uh, uh, are, are unique, so maybe even, even I can check some of them out. But uh, sometimes they, they might also be uh, popping up in other subgenres as well. Uh, so uh, keep in mind that some of your favorite movies that you thought should be in this video might be popping up elsewhere. With that, we're going to go ahead and call it a day. Thank you guys very much for attending, and class dismissed.